Hello and welcome to the Dittonworks YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about British two-way mini monitors. Speakers like this, Celestian A Compact, one of my favourites. And you'd be shocked at how much of a wallop some of these tiny little speakers can produce. So today, I'm not going to talk about the A Compacts, I've already spoken about those. I'm going to talk about these. These are the Bounds and Wilkins CM1s and they fall into that two-way mini monitor category. Let's have a closer look at them. So what have we got? We've got a two-way British mini monitor. Very deep cabinet for its size, so it's a, it's a pretty chunky cabinet. Typical Bowers and Wilkins woven Kevlar base driver um, with phase cap in the middle. And these have what's called a Nautilus loaded tweeter. So most people will be familiar with Lawrence Dickey's Bowers and Wilkins Nautilus, the 50,000 pound mega speakers the snail shell base driver with the tapered tubes on the rest of the drivers. This has some of that technology in it. So on the back of the magnet housing is a plastic tapered tube that's supposed to absorb some of the backfiring standing waves or sound waves from the tweeter. And um, that's, that's pretty good that you're getting that washed down technology from what's supposedly a sort of ultimate speaker. Something else quite interesting about these, these maple ones are definitely British built. The guy who owns these also had a black pair, high gloss piano finish, looked stunning. But he contacted me and said, they don't sound the same. And initially I thought perhaps being a newer one, so they're a couple of years newer than these, they really needed running in. So we ran them in, ran them in, ran them in. And then when we did an AB comparison several weeks later, there was still an audible difference. Now my first conclusion was that it was the piano finish, the lacquer, was affecting the sonic characteristics of the cabinet. There are other speakers that suffer from this. Apparently the Falcon Acoustics LS35As, the different finishes they offer actually affect the acoustic representation of the speaker. Now that was my initial conclusion, it's because they're a different finish. But I noticed when I was plugging in the black ones for the last time on the AB comparison, on the back, they're made in China. Now, you would imagine a company like Bowers and Wilkins would absolutely insist that they all sound the same. You know, they're all tested, they all sound the same. I have to admit that the later ones, the Chinese built ones, definitely sounded different to these. And in a way that I actually preferred these British built ones and I preferred the sound of these before we knew that they weren't both made in the UK. So I didn't think that was particularly good. Let's have a look at the actual speakers in depth. Let's have a look on the back of the enclosure first. So we're able to buy wire them, so that's a nice little feature. And then this interesting port. Now this is Bowers and Wilkins technology called a flow port. And this is like a golf ball turned inside out. Now a golf ball is dimpled because that dimpling effect allows it to travel through the air more efficiently than say a smooth ball would. A smooth ball will create turbulence around it, which that turbulence is actually slowing down the ball and it won't travel as far as a golf ball would. The idea is similar here, that this dimpled effect in this flow port is giving less turbulence coming out the back of the port. Now, some speakers do suffer with, with port chuffing and that port chuffing is basically that turbulence is starting to build up around the exit of the port and the next level of air is coming through and you can hear it. Let's just spin these round quickly. So as I said before, Nautilus loaded tweeter, woven Kevlar base driver with the face cap and this beautiful presentation. These are really an attractive pair of speakers in my sound, in my opinion. So let's have a listen to the sound. Okay, I'm going to give them a play, see if you guys can hear it on the video, and then I'll discuss what I think of these.
Okay, initially the first thing anybody would probably notice about these, they have a terrific bass response for the size of the speaker. Now some of that is a little bit false, and that's because the tweeter is very rolled off. That probably means that you're able to play these quite loud without it getting harsh or bright, which is a good thing. But that does mean you're losing a little bit of detail, a little bit of HF, and when you increase the volume at a reasonable level, you do get quite a lot of low end. Now these are well away from the walls, they're on solid stands, they're by wire, they're running through my setup as any other speaker would. They sound very pleasant, but they're quite warm. What I'm going to quickly do is play the same track through the A Compacts and see if you can detect that difference on the video. One second. Okay, I've quickly switched over to the Celestian A Compacts. Not to show you that either speaker is better, just to show you the difference between something that's very warm sounding and something that's a little bit more detailed. So the difference in sound between these is the CMs are very warm. There's quite, quite a rolled off sound to them, which gives you a very deep bass and, and pretty pleasant to listen to. You could certainly play those at quite high volume levels and that wouldn't hurt your ears. As where the A compacts have more detail, more HF. So if you did play them really loud, you'd probably find they would get a little bit bright. The overall balance, the A Compact sounds slightly lighter on bass, but that's not that they're less bassy, it's just that there's more going on in the HF, so the overall balance is closer together. So when the volume goes up, these will produce an enormous amount of bass, just like the CM1s will, but the CM1s seem to present that bass at a lower volume. Let's switch back and we'll conclude this. <laughs> Okay, so how do I think these sound? I picked that piece of music because it's called You're So Cool. Well, actually, these are the opposite of that. These are very warm rather than being cool. They're not at all, you know, duff, but they are very rolled off in the HF, which does give you the impression of them being quite bass heavy. So if you like dance music, electronic music, and you like a real load of slam to your, to your sound system, then these would be ideal, and they really have that in droves for such a small pair of speakers. I would say if your sort of thing really is more detail and finesse, you'd probably find these slightly lacking in the HF. Even if you turn the volume up, you do find that the LF is, is more pronounced than the HF. Um, I don't mind that, but there's certain types of music where that just sounds a tad unrealistic. So if you're listening to say, um, I don't know, jazz, then the double bass is just a little bit too heavy. As where if you listen to something like Massive Attack or Dead Mouse or something, these really rock and they're, they're really enjoyable to listen to. I think all in all, the technology seems to be working. There's no detectable port chuffing. That's very, very nice LF. The HF with the Nautilus loaded tweeter, um, like I said, it's a bit rolled off, but it's in no way harsh, shrill, bright, unpleasant at all. But these are a very warm sounding pair of speakers. So these would probably suit a system that was a little bit brighter. But I think they're quite pleasant. They're certainly pleasant to look at, they're quite pleasant to listen to, and they're very well made. This is an incredibly well made cabinet compared to the lossiness of the Spendors like I spoke um, last week on the Pro Axe. So listen, much, much stiffer cabinet there. Very, very good. I actually quite enjoy these. Um, in conclusion, if detail is your thing, you probably won't find it with these. If bass is your thing, you'll absolutely love these. They really are really really are very very good at the lf at the low frequencies they really knock it out of the park okay guys that's the ditton works video for today on the bows and wilkins cm ones and they do appear on the second hand market and for somebody who's listening wanting something that's got some real slam in the, in the low end they'll be for you take care guys see you next week